Well, it is morning for us here in Alaska. The sun has almost completely risen so far. It's about 9 a.m. Theo wants to say hi because he will not leave me alone. He's a good boy. We have a lot to go over today, but before we do, yeah, that's right. Starbucks Christmas cups are out, so if you haven't yet, go get you some. Seriously, it's literally like Christmas in a cup. I don't know how else to describe it. Today I went very basic in my order and went with a white peppermint mocha with an extra shot because it's a venti and you have to have an extra shot if it's a venti. Otherwise all they do is just give you more milk. So we are going to be supercharged up and ready to go. A lot of people enjoyed the video I posted on how to create your own custom Canva frames, but 50% of you weren't able to do it, which means the video as a whole is a big flop because if I can't help you, then what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> so today we are fixing all issues with two different platforms. We are going to be using Photopea like normal, like we did last time. And then we're also going to be using a website called Figma. My thoughts are that if one platform doesn't work for you, the other platform will. I cannot think of one reason why after this video, you should not be able to create your own custom frame. So I'm feeling very confident. So by the end of this video, you are going to be in your Canva frame creating era. It's your moment. It's your moment, my friend. So we're starting off in photo P today. So let's head over to photo P and see what we can do. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and open our SVG file, make sure that it is in fact an SVG file and we will open that from our computer and put that into photo P. As you can see, my SVG uploaded perfectly. This is not always going to happen depending on where you got your SVG from, whether you purchased it somewhere, downloaded it for free somewhere or created it yourself. Your layers panel might look really messy. If that's the case, you will need to clean that up to where you only have one layer. You can't have any folders or anything like that. I will make a future video on how to tidy up if that is something that you think you might be needing because it can be a big pain depending on the designer. Some designers are better at making a really easy file to work with and some designers, well, they just aren't. So with this file, it's beautiful. The designer did a great job and we have one layer. So we are already ready to move on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab any photo that we have on our computer. If you don't have one, just go search backgrounds on Google and download that and then we can upload that one. But any picture will do because it doesn't matter. It's only a placeholder. So I'm going to go to file, place, and then grab an image. Okay, so this is a recent image from Homer, Alaska. Beautiful place, by the way. And then I'm going to make sure that it is going over my entire SVG file. Okay, and then we'll click the check mark. So you need to make sure that it's covering your whole SVG file so that this works. If it's not covering the whole thing, it won't work. Over in the layers panel, you should have your image on top, your placeholder image, and then right below it should be your SVG layer. If you have anything else in there, it's wrong, okay? So as long as you are at this stage, we can then click on the image we can right click and we can click on clipping mask. As you can see, the clipping mask made it to where that image has clipped into that SVG shape. And in my case, it's text mainly, but in your case, it could be a silhouette of a dog, a paw print. It could be any type of SVG that you would like. This is different than creating a mask. So make sure that it is in fact a clipping mask so that it clips into that SVG below it. At this point, you're completely done and we just need to save it. In the saving process for photo P, you have to save it as a PSD for this to work. So we're gonna click save as PSD. 
I went ahead and saved this as a PSD as a Canva test frame, and I'm going to now head over to Canva. I have my canvas already ready, so we are going to click on upload and then upload that file, that PSD file into Canva. You will notice that it's not uploading in the normal location. So like normally it's right here where your images are, but it's not going to be there because it's a PSD file. It's going to be in your projects folder. So once you click on that, you'll see that it's either uploaded or uploading. And then once it's done, you'll just grab it, pull it over to your canvas. And at this point, we can now detach the frame. There's two different ways to detach the frame, okay? We can either double click, and you'll notice that the image kind of selected, but the text or the SVG behind it didn't, and we can delete that. And then here is the standard Canva placeholder image that you want to get to for a frame. The next way that you can do this is by right clicking and going down to where it says detach image. And there you go. And then you would just delete that because we still had the black from that SVG. There will also be a the black SVG underneath it. So you will want to move your frame out of the way, grab that black, delete it, and then put your frame back. So to test our frame, we'll just shrink it down a bit and then grab some type of background. There we go. And then we'll grab it and just wiggle it around like we normally would. And there you have a custom Canva frame using Photopea. Now, if you want another way to do it, we're going to use Figma. And Figma works very similar, but in the off chance that you don't like Photopea, that you can't get this to work like some of you couldn't, Figma is another option and works wonderfully as well. So we're in Figma now, and what I want to do is click where it has this little logo F, and we're going to click on File, and then Place Image. We'll grab that same SVG file, and then now it wants us to drag it. So we're going to drag that SVG file however we want it. There we go. Once you have that done, all you have to do is select it. Over on the right-hand side, you're going to see a fill option. So you'll click on fill, and you'll notice at the top here, it has a few different icons. We have one for solid, gradient, image, and then video. And we are going to click image. Now this is going to create essentially that clipping mask that we created in Photopea, but they just don't call it a clipping mask in Figma. So we're gonna click on the image, and now it wants us to upload an image from the computer, just like we did in Photopea for the clipping mask. So I'm gonna grab an image from my computer to use for this one. And as you can see, it puts that right into the SVG, just like we did in Photopea. Now all we have to do is save it, and this time we save it differently. Instead of a PSD file, we're saving it as a PDF file. So we'll want to go to Export, and then where it says PNG, we are going to be clicking on PDF, and then we're going to click on Export Vector. All right, so we're back in Canva now, and we're going to upload that PDF file from Figma. So as you can see, it's uploading here just fine, and it's loading in. Now we just drag it and drop it onto our canvas, and then again, we can detach it two different ways. I like to just double click it. In Figma, you do not then have that black background, so you can see there's no black background. So let's go ahead and shrink this down a bit and we can test this file as well. And there we go. Well, did you do it? I feel super excited to hear from you guys in the comments. If you were able to complete your Canva frame, finally, please let me know in the comments below and especially let me know which platform worked for you or which one you preferred, Photopea or Figma to create your Canva frame. Honestly, I was surprised, but I actually enjoyed Figma more and I think I'll be using Figma for my future Canva frames. It's just faster and honestly less steps and easier. I don't know, what do you think? If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up so that it gets pushed out to all the different people who are trying to solve this problem themselves and maybe we can save them a little bit of heartache. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you get notified every single time I post a video. Now go out there and design a life you love and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.